Hey, this is the great Johannes speaking. I want to discuss the European Council on Foreign Relations, or you can find their website at ecfr.eu. I've got it right here in front of me on my laptop. So I'm going to be reading uh, from three of their articles where they have this uh, bullet point summaries that I think are just total horseshit. I, I have to explain a little bit what that is. What is the ECFR? The CFR is an American uh, power clique, so to speak, the Council on Foreign Relations, where basically mm, everything that happens in U.S. empire is decided upon by these people who are not elected. So in case you thought that, for example, in, uh, in America and the USA, their democracy is the top level of power, it is not. There's more levels above it, obviously, because you couldn't expect uh, a demented man like Joe Biden to actually rule the USA, could you? He doesn't. You have the CFR, you have uh, the National Security Council, and so on and so forth. You have other structures there in the USA that make sure that there is a sort of security continuity so that a random imbecile who gets himself elected cannot wreck the nation because there are other structures preventing that from ever happening. But now Europe has its own ECFR, the European Council on Foreign Relations. I thought initially that this was only similar in name, uh, meaning I thought that the ECFR was a truly independent organization for Europeans uh, promoting the European interests to the world, a sort of think tank that figures out what we here need in Europe, how we are going to advance ourselves in the light of all sorts of threats and you know, enemies and whatsoever. But if you just read the articles on their website, the first impression you get is, this is not an independent think tank. This is an extension of the American CFR. The ECFR uh, isn't even a think tank. It seems as though they get their ideology handed to them from the American CFR, and the European CFR only cooks up reasons and polls and, and whatnot to justify that the American worldview for Europeans. In other words, I'm trying to explain that the ECFR is a colonial enterprise. The Americans have colonized Europe in 1945. They continue to colonize Germany, for example. There are plenty of uh, American bases in Germany. But let me just get to the point now. I want to go through three articles published on their, on their website, of the ecfr.eu website. Uh, one is titled, A United West Divided from the Rest, Global Public Opinion One Year into Russia's War on Ukraine. This one's written by, uh, among others, the director of the ECFR, Mark Leonard, and uh, two other authors. So they have a summary, five bullet points, so it's easy to go, uh, go through them. A new poll suggests that Russia's war on Ukraine has consolidated the West. European and American citizens hold many views in common about the major global questions. This isn't true at all. Yes, if you turn on TV, if you watch our media in the Netherlands and Germany, yes, the media keep putting out the American view of these events, the American version of the conflict in Ukraine. But to, to conclude based on that, that we Europeans, the people and their leaders, are somehow aligned with the USA in this conflict? That is total bullshit. Have you heard of the Nord Stream pipeline? Someone blew it up, and it wasn't the Russians, and it wasn't Germany. Yeah, it severely crippled German industry. Uh, it hurt almost all Europeans who now have to pay hundreds of euros a month uh, more for their heating costs. Uh, this was not our conflict. You know, ever since von Bismarck, uh, the German unifier, uh, we in Europe understood that we need to have good diplomatic ties with Russia so that we can get access to Russia's cheap resources, their gas, their coal, their oil, their whatever, diamonds, gold, anything they've got. Russia is a large continent or large country that has a lot of resources that we need, especially German industry could use those resources. And it's been understood for, for, for a very long time by proper German leaders that we need to have diplomatic relations with Russia. So during First World War, <laughs> during the First World War, which is after von Bismarck, they go to war, Germans go to war with Russia, they lose. Second World War, Hitler goes to war with Russia, they lose. 
Napoleon tried to go to war with Russia, they lose. Now we're supposed to go to war with Russia under goofy doofy Joe Biden, who is demented, a fool. But I, like I told you, they have other structures on top of that. The Pentagon, the CFR, uh, the National Security Council, and so on. They really rule the USA and the democracy is just for show. I hope everybody gets that by now. It is simply not so that European citizens see things the American way. We don't. We've been hurt by the American sabotage of the Nord Stream pipeline because the Americans did it. They deny it. They don't talk about it. They believe their own lies on everything now. No, we Europeans actually realize that we are not aligned with the USA. Their wars that they are waging around the world, uh, through which they wage through NATO and expect European allies, quote unquote, or vassals, what we really are, to go and fight alongside them uh, in all these stupid conflicts, uh, we realize that's not what we want anymore. Uh, we actually see now that what we need is independence from the USA, which is what uh, French President Macron has also said, that we need independence from the USA. So Europeans and Americans agree they should help Ukraine to win. No, we don't agree on that. See, this is all... This is all of this that you're going to read in the article is proclamation. The ECFR under director Mark Leonard proclaims the American worldview as though it were ours as well, as though we Europeans see things the way Americans see things. And we don't have our own opinions because we need America. Without America, we would be speaking German right now. Ugh! Because that's the greatest fear of every American, right? Just to have to learn another language. But in Europe, we speak so many different languages this is not something we're afraid of. And that Russia is our avowed adversary. No, it's our ally. Basically, it's a neighbor with a lot of cheap resources. It's certainly not our enemy. We don't want Russia as our enemy. Russia is on our doorstep. It's like, would the USA be, on, uh, be constantly waging war against Mexico? Well, maybe if Mexico had more oil, the US would invade Mexico. Yeah, we understand that part. And in the coming global order... Most likely, it will be defined by two blocks led respectively by the U.S. and China. So this is the American worldview saying, no, 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 I know there's trouble in the world. Everything's going to shit. Everything's going to hell. But, 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 but please listen to us. We Americans are going to stay in charge alongside China. It's going to be a bipolar world, the two poles. It used to be America versus Russia, right? And then the Soviet Union collapsed. And now it's going to be America versus China. And Americans are going to win that, right? We're going to just win it again. No. What we realize now is that in the Eurasian continent, you've got India, China, you've got um, uh, Russia and Europe. And these four big major players in terms of either population power or technological power or whatever it is, cultural power, whatever it is. Uh, you see that these four players are going to dominate the Eurasian continent. And it's very likely that the USA... It's going to be the Americas are going to turn into a sweatshop. Already, did you know that in Los Angeles, you can get a job working in a sweatshop, earning $1.86 an hour sewing clothes. In China, they get paid twice as much. So forget about this nonsense that China is somehow a cheap labor force. It is not. China is now an advanced labor force and they charge money. They charge more than what you get in the USA for basic work. It's more expensive now. <clears throat> I don't see this happening at all. Who in their right minds could write something like this? And do you really expect that in the future, the United States is going to stay in power and we're going to compete with China? No, 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 no. The USA is not going to stay in power at all. From the European perspective, we, we realize the USA, the US empire is going down, bust and broke, and then it will be the, the power in the West will flow back to Europe and the power in the world may actually flow to China, Russia, India, because they will be the economic powerhouses together, right? Unless we Europeans learn to strengthen our diplomatic ties with Russia so we get access to the cheap Russian resources, we can strengthen the central European economies, that is mainly Germany, the German backbone, and so the German Germanic peoples, by the way, from Denmark to Northern Italy, form a sort of backbone in Europe. The Germanic backbone is the economic backbone of Europe. The French don't like that. You know, nobody likes it, but that's just how it is. So power is going to come back to Europe that will make Germany strong. We will have good ties with Russia. 
our economy will flourish, but so will China. So it's going to be Europe and China dominating Eurasia. All right? And don't be afraid of Russia. Russia has about 130 million inhabitants. Europe has 750 million. So what are you talking about? We have twice the population of the USA and similar wealth. If the USA messes up their Taiwan conflict, basically the US is over, but Europe will flourish. <clears throat> In contrast, citizens in China, India, and Turkey, which they now spell as Turkey eh, rather than Turkey, prefer a quick end to the war, even if Ukraine has to concede territory. Yes, but that's not really in it's not in contrast with what we in European we Europeans want. Most Europeans who are able to think for themselves realize that that's what we also want. Just give Russia Crimea, normalize the diplomatic ties, right, and then. Um, move on from there, but then we'll do that without the USA being in power. And then people in these non-Western countries, as though they're like weird people, and in Russia, as though Russia is Western, Russia is not, also consider the emergence of a multipolar world to be more probable than a bipolar arrangement. So here we learn that the USA has a view of the future of themselves staying in power and now we're going to be a bipolar world of US and China because that's all Americans understand. They've got, they've got so many decades of having only Democrats and Republicans to vote for, only a two-party system. So they see the world as in black and white, good and bad, you know, US versus China. When in reality, the multipolar world where several actors will dominate the Eurasian continent, right? And and America, the Americas, the Americas, as I said, will turn into a sweatshop. That is very likely. But they won't write that because the ECFR is pro-US. They're, they're portraying the US worldview. Western decision makers should take into account that the consolidation of the West is taking place in an increasingly divided post-Western world. Yeah. No, the West is not consolidating. What they, what they mean to say is that, oh, we in the West have basically completely isolated ourselves from the rest of the world. The whole rest of the world is uniting against us because everybody hates the USA. And this is our opportunity for us in Europe to decide whether or not we want to go on with that sinking Titanic called the USA. And that emerging powers such as India and Turkey, Turkey will act on their own terms and resist being caught in a battle between America and China. That is also wishful thinking. Why would a think tank produce content that is just wishful thinking? Why don't you actually use your brain to think? Uh, India obviously will side with China, right? Turkey if it wants to stay in power, it could also just align with Russia. Then Turkey will be better off than the deal they have with the US, whatever it is, right? Because Turkey can become a connector between Russia and say Europe or Russia and, and India, or whatever, they can be um, a catalyst. It doesn't make sense for anyone who can use a brain to imagine that, oh, Turkey and India will not meddle with our conflict with Russia. They're just going to sit by the sidelines while we Americans fight it out against Taiwan and China. No, Turkey and India have their own interests. They can think, they can think for themselves. The Americans perhaps not, but they can. And Turkey, you know, in case the U.S. is going down, Turkey will side with Russia, period. In case the U.S. has economic trouble, India will just side with China. Why not? See? <laughs> Uh, this is very hard to grasp for Americans, and apparently they're, uh, they're European vassal slaves over here. Oh, here's another article called Fragile Unity, Why Europeans Are Coming Together on Ukraine and What Might Drive Them Apart. So yeah, Europeans are coming together on Ukraine, namely that we don't want this war. That's our attitude. We don't want this damn war. Get it over with. Normalize our relations with, with Russia so we can have cheap gas, fuel, oil flowing into our economies again. That's what we want. That's the European unity, you know. And what might drive us apart? Ah, see, that's American wishful thinking. They want to drive Germany apart from France, right? Because Germany is, as I said, is uh, still occupied territory, still being occupied by the U.S. military. The German media are not free, we don't have free press in Germany. German, German press simply uh, copy-paste whatever Americans tell them to copy-paste. 
So a recent multi-country poll for the ECFR suggests that Europeans have come closer together in their support for Ukraine. No. Who are they polling? Who are they polling? Left, left-wing voters, apparently, who subscribe to the newsletter because everybody else like me isn't on their, on their, on their newsletter. I wasn't polled. People like me aren't polled, but we, are the, we represent the majority. Europeans now agree that Russia is their adversary or rival. <laughs> no, no, we don't agree upon that. Uh, we didn't have any conflict with Russia since the Cold War. Cold War also was the American conflict. Basically, the Anglo, the Anglo-American, the British Empire, and after it fell apart, the Five Eyes, you know, Australia, New Zealand, and so on. The Americans, Canadians, they have a conflict with Russia because if Russia and Germany would work together diplomatically, then Europe would become more powerful than the USA. And that's the problem. That's what the USA does not want at all costs. But that doesn't mean we Europeans now agree that Russia is our rival or our adversary. That's what the Americans want us to believe. That's not what we believe. Uh, But these factors leading to this apparent unity uh, are fragile and European leaders should be careful in their optimism. You know, European policymakers should take advantage of this unity, our apparent unity for Ukraine against Russia, to equip Ukraine quickly with, you know, weapons, while doing everything they can to mitigate divisions caused by changing circumstances at home and abroad. So the Americans do realize, you know, that Europeans don't support their worldview. We don't care if the USA stays in power. Uh, and the reason is, we'll see that in the next article. This one's titled, The Art of Vassalization, How Russia's War on Ukraine Has Transformed Transatlantic Relations. Russia's invasion of Ukraine has revealed Europeans' profound dependence on the U.S. for their security, despite EU efforts at achieving strategic autonomy. So the USA doesn't want Europe to have strategic autonomy. The U.S. has actively sabotaged European efforts to make ourselves autonomous uh, from them. The word autonomous or independent means that we don't have to call Washington every time we want to make a decision. And that Washington cannot tell us to go along with their wars anymore. Uh, Europe actually does not depend on the U.S. for our security. Uh, we could literally fire up whatever factories we have, and within three months, we have all the equipment, all the military equipment, ready to defend ourselves. So we don't need the USA. This is a three-month thing. It's not 30 years. It's not three years. It's a three-month to six-month operation, and we make ourselves militarily completely independent from the USA. It can be done in three to six months. That is not an issue. It's just that the USA does not want us to do that. Oh, Over the last decade, the EU has grown relatively less powerful than America, economically, technologically, and militarily. That is because American corporations have been plundering and pillaging Western Europe especially, and also Eastern Europe to some degree. They have been sucking the money out of our economies. They don't pay taxes. Starbucks and and whatever, Amazon, Facebook, do you think they pay taxes in Europe? No, they use Europe to launder their money through through an Amsterdam postbox firm, for example. But they don't actually pay taxes here. They've been sucking us dry. That means the opposite conclusion is true. If Europe would cut loose from the USA, we would actually financially gain. It would be a beneficial decision for us to make ourselves independent from the USA. But the US doesn't want us to do that. Europeans also still lack agreement on crucial strategic questions for themselves, and they look to Washington for leadership. (laughs) No, we don't look to Washington for leadership. We look to ourselves for leadership. Look, in Europe, Western Europe, our prime ministers, like Olaf Scholz, uh, Bundeskanzler, Chancellor of Germany, or... Mark Rutte of the Netherlands and so on. These creatures are puppets of the USA. That's why they look to Washington for leadership because they are unfree. They are the serfs, the vassals to Washington. But if we would just have honest elections in Europe where we could actually vote for the people we want, right? People who are 
capable of thinking independently from what Washington tells them to believe, then we would instantly have a leadership that can just look to itself and to our own people in Europe, and we wouldn't need Washington for what? You need us to go to war with you against uh, Taiwan and against Russia. Why? To keep you in power. But we don't need you in power. We, can, we would be better off without you. That's just how it is. In the Cold War, Europe was a central front of superpower competition. Now the US expects the EU and the UK to fall in line behind its China strategy and will use its leadership position to ensure this outcome. They're admitting it. They're admitting it. <clears throat> you know, they're just pl plainly admitting that the USA wants to continue to dominate Europe and the UK and Tell Europeans, now's the time to go to war. March on and die for America. Die for your Starbucks coffee. Die for your McDonald's. To which we Europeans say this symbol, dick and balls, bitch. No, we don't need to do this. Europe becoming an, becoming an American vassal is unwise for, <laughs> is unwise for both sides. But we are vassals. Western Europe was colonized after World War II. Germany is still under American occupation. Uh, we are vassals. The Netherlands is a vassal. You know, Belgium is a vassal. We are vass The EU, for Christ's sake, was created with the help of the American secret services. The CIA co-founded the European Union as a method of um, imposing upon us a transnational structure a supranational structure that they control so that, as in the words of Kissinger, Henry Kissinger, the American war criminal, who do you call when you call Europe? So they created the EU so they could call Brussels to tell Europe what to do rather than to have, make, have to make phone calls to 50 different leaders in 50 different languages. Now they can just call Brussels in English and tell the whole EU, Europe, what to do. So it's nonsense. Um, Europe can become a stronger and more independent part of the Atlantic Alliance by developing independent capacity to support Ukraine and acquiring greater military capa capabilities. So <laughs> they're saying that from the U.S. perspective, they want Europe now to militarize so that we can go and die in the war against Russia for American empire. But we're not going to do that, Right. Uh, we don't want to be a part of your Atlantic alliance. What the hell does that even mean? That means we, we Europeans will be the pillars of American power. You will rest on our shoulders. But we don't need you because you're fat. Okay? Get off our backs. Uh, what I think is going to happen is that Europe will make itself more stronger militarily, but we, would, we won't do so because the Americans want us to do so. We'll do it on our, on our own accord. And we will figure out that we can defend ourselves perfectly fine. We don't need the U.S. I mean, what is the U.S. military power anyway? Yeah? You've got like, you've got eight carrier ships and that's it. And those things are over a half a century old. And that's all, that's all your, that's your real projective, projectable power. That's all you've got really. It's not that much. You know, what I think is going to happen is the Western world will, this century, be ruled by Europe, the center of power will return to Europe to the German Franco, the German French axis. Mainly it's going to be the Germanic peoples, German peoples, German speaking peoples in the center of Europe, Central Europe, who will become the economic backbone of Europe. And well, like I said, the United States, it's going to be a fine sweatshop to produce your new Nike shoes because they won't do that in China anymore because the Chinese are more talented now. So this is the end of my little uh, quirky little video. Uh, I just don't believe that the United States is going to stay in power. It will not be a conflict between the U.S. and China for long. Um, the Eurasian, this massive Eurasian continent is going to become um, the dominant force in the world in the future. And the United States will have to take a back seat. That's just how it is. But hey, you can wear a dress now in the USA if you're a man. Good luck with that.